I'm sure people are sick of me talking about Pokemon and art design, so I figured we'd change it up a little bit and talk about a new concept that was introduced in the latest games of Scarlet and Violet, and something that I hope that Pokemon continues to toy with for future designs and gimmicks. Paradox Pokemon. Hi, I'm Alga Common, a professional loser at your service. If for some reason you're not familiar with the concept, essentially Paradox Pokemon are Pokemon that are either from the ancient past or distant future. The past Pokemon are based on ancient creatures, meanwhile the future ones are more artificial creations of Pokemon that we know. In a sense, they're a branch off of the regional forms. The only difference is that all the Paradox Pokemon are genderless, they have a past and future theme, and they lack the ability to breed and have no evolutions. They're kind of like the Ultra Beasts for the most part. Now, we can spend all day and night complaining about how I think this is a major flaw on Game Freak's part, since who wouldn't want to see a Screamtail become a Wigglytuff equivalent? Or seeing the build-up to Iron Thorns with Lavatar and Pupitar? Also, the idea of trying to breed a perfect IV Paradox Pokémon is swept off the table. Those are flaws that I think are more objective in nature because it has to do with the game mechanics, and I think having such a subset of Pokémon you can't really be bred or evolved are issues of the game that I have. These aren't deal breakers, mind you, but still issues that I have. I do think that the concept of Paradox Pokemon is a great one, but there are some issues that I have with the designs. So more of a subjective stance for being honest. I hope that these Pokemon are used later in the series, that Pokemon will fix the mechanical natures of these Pokemon, but the subjective issues I have with them are a bit more... Harder to expect? I guess? I want to make it clear that my issues are mostly with the future Paradox Pokemon. I adore the past Paradox ones. I've read a few of the online posts and apparently I might be in the minority with that opinion because a lot of people think that they're all angry, edgy versions of their modern day counterparts. I disagree with that fundamentally, especially when you look at Fluttermane, Screamtail, and Sandy Shocks. They don't really convey that in their designs. Yeah, the Pokedex, they do mention that they're more aggressive, but their designs don't really convey that to me. Not to mention, I do prefer the ancient Pokémon since they have a much more diverse design elements to them, and all the while still conveying that the same theme of ancient version without being repetitive. And at the very least, they have different naming conventions and don't just share IRON in their name, even though they should be more chrome. Everything is chrome in the future! Yeah, we're talking about the future Paradox Pokémon. Now, I like robots. I like them a lot. Hell, I'm all for there being robotic Pokémon, because it's not like artificial Pokémon aren't a thing in the games already. You've got things like Genesect, which is more of a futuristic weapon. Then you've got Porygon, which is a digital-only Pokémon. Then you've got things like Mew and Sylvanee, which are artificial life forms. Hell, if you want to consider the other side, with ancient Pokémon, fossil Pokémon have always been a thing in the games. So when I heard we were getting something like that, futuristic Pokémon, oh, I was on board, and unfortunately, I was disappointed. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Iron Treads, Iron Bundle, Iron Hands, Iron Jungulus, Iron Moth, Iron Thorns, I am Iron Man. Like, the naming convention I am not too fond of. Because at least with the ancient Paradox Pokemon, they had different adjectives and didn't share the same theme. This is probably a nitpick on my end and one that I'm acknowledging, but I kind of wish we had something a little bit different. Say, like, Satellite Moth, Bright Thorns, Steel Valiant. These are just off the top of my head. I don't know, I think it's a bit of a weak naming convention that they all have the same iron in their names. Now, if that was the only issue I had with future Pokémon, well, I wouldn't be making a video about this. I'd probably just say a tweet and then move on with a different video topic. All you ever do is complain. You never try to make things better. But you remember when I brought up things like Genesect, Sylvani, and Porygon? Well, those are all future concepts that could have been used for the designs for future Pokémon, but we just went with robots. Now, I remember this was done before by fans, but to me that's not a good argument. When you're a franchise that's almost 30 years old, these sorts of things will happen. It's literally Simpsons did it! And even then, this was done by Sonic. Need I bring up Metal Sonic, Metal Knuckles? Now, I wish we could have gotten some mutated or evolved forms of these Pokémon, since the future doesn't just have to be robots. Dystopian futures are a thing, you know! I understand that this idea does run the risk of having the Pokémon essentially be glorified regional forms, only bending the space-time continuum, but I don't see that as a good argument either, mainly because regional forms rock. Hell, look at Muriadon. Even though that has a lot of futuristic elements, you can still see its bioorganic creature and stands up from the rest of the Paradox future Pokémon. Iron Valiant is the second most interesting since it's the fusion between Mega Gardevoir and Mega Gallade, and then roboticized. This is not me saying the designs are terrible. In a vacuum, these Pokémon look good. 
The problem is, as a group, there's a bit too much uniformity. Now, I've said in the past that I like uniformity in designs. I brought up things like Super Sentai or people working for the same organization and how that can be a good thing. Now, maybe there's some hypothetical mega corporation in the future of the Pokemon world that created all these Pokemon robots that would explain why they have so many design elements that share the same, but at the moment, that's just the theory. A game! Th no! Not that! Never again! But who knows, maybe that's the point. When you think about it, the past Paradox Pokemon are a bit more chaotic and lack any sort of unifying design element other than BEAST MODE! And the future Paradox Pokemon are obviously robots. That being said, I've seen some interesting takes that the Paradox Pokemon of Violet feature fully evolved Pokemon and two pseudo-legendary Pokemon, meanwhile the ancient Pokemon don't really have that. Seriously, there's an article all about that. Now, if you ask me, I'm actually glad about that. Not only does it offer more diversity in the choices being made, because if you guys remember back when Mega Evolutions came out, one of the biggest complaints it had was a good chunk of the Pokémon that got them were Pokémon that didn't really need them. I mean, you've got both Charizard and Mewtwo getting two of these blasted forms. Even when the roster got boosted in Oras, a good chunk of them were for Pokémon that were already good, and in the case of Garchomp, it could have been more of a side grade. Paradox Pokémon have a bit more flexibility. I mean, even Delibird got one. Holy hell! This goes back to what I was saying before with why, despite my criticisms of the future Paradox Pokémon, I do like the idea of them. There's also a bit of a hint that these Pokémon aren't actually from the past or future. When you hear the word Paradox, you think about time traveling, you can't help but think of this. You've created a time paradox! But there's a bit more to it, especially if you consider these images from the Scarlet and Violet books that are in the game. If you take note of the sorts of Justice Pokémon, it doesn't seem robotic at all. It's more or less a combination of the three Pokémon. Which, when you consider the other trios of Pokémon like that, like the original Reggie trio, this does open up a lot of potential. I can recall a fusion between the legendary birds and the original manga. That'd be nice to see if that happened. There's a lot of potential to be had here, and considering that the sorts of Justice depicted a creature as more of a fusion of the three rather than a robotic combination, it makes me wonder if there was supposed to be more of a natural fused paradox Pokémon for Violet. Perhaps it's just an imaginary Pokémon, but I would like to know what the creator of both the Scarlet and Violet books, what Heath, actually saw. Also, on a side note, I'm sure the Heath being mentioned here isn't this guy. Like, I know he's from the side series of games, but I cannot be the only one who thought of this character when I looked up that name. Yeah, this is a relatively short video, but I don't have much to talk about. I'm working on a much more comprehensive review of Scarlet and Violet, but I would like to hear what you guys have to say down below. Let me know what you guys think about the Paradox Pokémon, and if you can't think of an opinion, then please type in the word THEORY in the comments. Let me know you made it this far. <sighs> God, I'm sad just saying that. Hi, I'm Manga Common, and remember to have a good day. Bye-bye.